speaking to pretty much every single person who would get into an elevator with me. Like at any time, I was like in this exploration phase where I was just super in the way to every individual around me. And I was like, hey, so how often do you use elevators? How do you find them? Where do you get information if you haven't used this elevator before that it's here? And just simple questions, people started to be like, you know what? Like, yeah, I really need to know that information. And so that's really the spark. I realized, okay, this is a need, and I want to start working towards some kind of vision where people can find access and know where they're going. You could hit the slide for me over there, my fancy slide people. So that's what it was. I realized that there was a need, there was a lot of people who could benefit, and that's where I started building Access Now. So really what Access Now is, is it's a community of people who are working together actively to share the information that they know about the places that they go every day, or places that they visit once in their life, or places that they've talked to their friends about. It could be anything. And the idea is that if every single ind individual shares what they know about the access that they experience, we could create this community of people in Toronto, in the GTA, in Canada, throughout the world, who can share that information and empower each other to really find access. And not for each individual to be calling on their own, struggling individually, but to work together to actually solve this very fundamental issue of information. That's all it is. It's information that provides access. So right now, when you go to Access Now, you could get slide. You would see a map. And the map has pins. Now I'm going to go to the other side just for fun. And on the map, every pin is a location. And so it's literally people rating locations based on their level of access. So green places on the map are the fully accessible places, and red ones are the ones that are not accessible. And then we've got like a yellow, which is like an in-between, uh, which is like basically you go somewhere and you, you can get in, but you can't go upstairs or something. So we've created these basic categories, and every pin represents one location. And these locations are added from the community. So basically every person, whether they have a disability or not, can go to Access Now and share that information about what they know. And that's really the power of the project. That's how we grow. So we launched in August 2015, right before the Para Pan Am Games, which was like my first milestone that I really wanted to hit. Because I realized there were so many people coming to Toronto who could benefit from this information. So we launched, uh, and this is what Access Now looks like here, like on the ground. Like this is the DMZ. Oh wait. <laughs> so this is the DMZ, and you can see like the surrounding areas and the pins that have been added. A lot of green, which is good, uh, and some places which are red. And when you start to zoom out or go further back, thank you. That's what Toronto starts to look like. And so these are basically pockets of information that people have been contributing based on their experiences in their neighborhoods or their communities. And then every individual who goes to Access Now can find that information and actually just live a more independent, free life. Because honestly, that's what it's about. It's about connecting. It's about empowering each other to do that in a way that actually makes sense. So when you zoom out even further, you get this. Uh, so this is what this is what Access Now looks like across the globe, and that's really for me the most exciting thing is that we're not just talking about one or two pins. We're talking about the potential for millions and millions of, of pins and people contributing to a movement that is literally access. It's people who are sharing what they know and contributing to that knowledge on a mass scale. So when people ask me, like, what, what do you want? Like, what's your vision for the future? My vision is to fill this map with billions of pits. And what can happen once we do that is really even more exciting. Which brings us into the policy part. So now I'm going to talk with like, my civic hat on. So when we have information about accessibility, we can use that information to actually do something. So right now, what's really interesting is I'll go to an event and they'll say, welcome, we are the most accessible this or that. And I'm like, that's cool. Where did you get that information? 
Well, we just are. Really? Because I've got a map that says otherwise. So right now, if you live in Ontario, we've got this law that says that by 2025, everything is supposed to be fully accessible. And realistically, we are very behind in actually accomplishing that goal. There is a lot of places right now that are not accessible. And there isn't really enough data or information that can be used to actually create a change. So by marking places as red, we're not just doing it to shame places, although that is quite fun, I will admit. Um, we're also doing it to use that information to create access. So we've begun a relationship with the Stopgap Foundation here in Toronto, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but basically what they do is you'll see a lot of really brightly colored ramps all over Toronto, and they're, they're providing an accessible solution to that one step up. So every time we've notified, every time we see a place that is one step up as the barrier, we've now found a way to create access. And that's really, what is very cool is that we can use that information to go even further. So when you look at like Yorkville right now, it's like a red zone. It's like one green pin in a sea of red. Um, cool, they're all hiding and hoping that nobody finds them, but we found them. And so now we want to use that information to actually go to City Hall and say, hey, or go to the Ontario government and say, hey, this is an issue and it's affecting millions of people and it's time to do something about it. So that's like the legal advocate in me and I try and play like many hats and not scare anyone away <laughs> because I'm very passionate about it on a personal level, but then there's also just a civic duty of every, indiv every individual, whether you're a business owner or a developer, or someone who just has an idea to think about access. And access really comes down to customer service. If I go somewhere, or let's say, you know what, not me, you. You go somewhere, and you show up, and they say, you know what, we don't, well, you know what, can you use the back entrance? That's the customer service experience. And so it's not intentional, but right now that's the reality for a lot of places, not fully accessible, can you use the back entrance? Can you just, mm -hmm. We can make those changes so that everybody has the same equitable experience, because really that's a human right. So that's a lot of talking about access and human rights and advocacy, and this is really the platform that stemmed from that. I am so excited to pretty much witness before my eyes the birth of a community that's working towards this goal actively, and it's not just people with disabilities, it's people who had a, a parent who is now using a wheelchair, or their sister sprain their ankle, or they themselves realize, you know what, this is something that I can contribute. This is something that I can do because what we say is every pin counts. You add one pin and you contribute it to this movement. So I encourage you all to add pins if you feel so obliged to do. And further, since this is a room of people who can actually really do really cool shit, can I say shit? <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would encourage you guys to think kind of outside of the box when, and we've been doing that kind of at the office and I'm gonna kind of invite you all to join us in that, is that there's a lot of little fragmented pieces of information and they're kind of all over the web. And there's no, not that I'm aware anyway, there's no like organized system of aggregating that information when it comes to access. So if you guys are interested in the challenge or you feel that you would like to jump into this space we're looking for ways to aggregate information and share it on Access Now. So think about it, and if it's something that intrigues you, I'd be happy to speak about that um, and how we could further use that information to actually create the changes. We don't really mean like we're gonna go with pitchforks and go into Tax City Hall, but that is an option. It's more so about amplifying the message. And that if every individual becomes an advocate, we can this way create the change. So that's all the talking I'm gonna do about like the me and the access and the stuff. And now I just kind of wanted to open it up to you guys if you have questions. Um, I'll try my best to answer. And before I forget to plug the event that's happening on Thursday, at the DMZ we're having a panel discussion about accessibility and inclusive design, and it's here. Um, and like the DTZ is involved, and like some designers and architects. 
and me. <laughs> uh, David Onley is the moderator, so it should be a really good one. And if you're interested in the space, you should come by. It starts at 1 p.m. on Thursday. Okay, thank you. So now just questions if you have any.
or as you uh, know? So Google, so a year ago when we started, Google wasn't prompting anyone for info. Recently, in the last couple months, there, Google is kind of like, oh, accessibility kind of matters. Um, and it's kind of this new wave that people are catching on to. So to not spill the beans, um, there's something there. Um, <laughs> this is so weird to like talk but not talk. <laughs> um, in short, yes, there is something that Google is doing. And yes, it's possible that we are a part of it. <laughs> you not confirm or deny that. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank well, you thanks. And I'll be here if you guys have Okay, so now we're going to move on to Project Fitch.